Welcome everyone. This is the week five and we're going to do some GitHub um, collaboration today. We have an Etherpad today and as usual, this call is being recorded for later use as well as the code of conduct applies here. We might not do breakout session today because we have a very small uh, number of people joining. So we will just use the main room um, and try to make sure that we stop recording in places where conversation are happening informally. I will go ahead and show you a bit of slides, but it would be very little of slides after a while. We're just gonna make sure that this is as interactive as possible. So this, this material have been developed through so several iteration from different people. So I just want to put the credit in the front, but this is also CC by 4.0. So you can reuse this slide later on. Um, there are a lot of information we'll provide and I don't expect you to actually know all of them. Um, so please come back to this set of slides, but also video and etherpad in your own time to revisit everything that we will discuss today. So some of the things that we'll discuss is to uh, identify and understand what version control means and why is it important for you beyond code? What is GitHub? Uh, how do we use GitHub and Markdown? So Markdown as a formatting sort of language. Um, we'll do some exercises like adding a readme file. So in your previous uh, cohort calls, you've learned about what readme means, uh, what are contribution guideline and code of conduct. And we will make sure that um, you have the chance to understand where do you add them. We'll also try to do a GitHub page, uh, which would mean that if you've never created a website before, this would be an exciting moment for us to show you how you can turn a simple readme page into a web page. And we could also have time, if we have the time, we'll also go through some of the GitHub features, but GitHub is massive and you are not required to learn all about it. So we are today mostly focusing on GitHub for collaborative documents um, or in general thinking about collaborative documents. There are a lot of challenges when you work on collaborative documents, uh, especially when people are working in different time zones, people are working um, in different computers altogether, you're not sitting in the same room. You have less conversation live, which means it's asynchronous. It could have lots of conflicting edit. Um, you may even lose track of locations if people are using different versions of collaborative documents. Um, and also versions. What if nobody's actually keeping track of version? How would you go back to the previous edit or who, how would you learn what has changed? So let's uh, think about this person, this Fox as you, who's working on your own computer. You have a repository. Repository is um, a folder where all the files for your projects are sitting. So this file could be multiple types of file. Uh, it could be either script that someone else has written for you or you've written for your program um, or, your, or a set of documentation or manual. So what happens on a daily basis when you work on this document? Uh, you come across idea that, oh, I probably need to have multiple folders. Maybe one folder should have data, one folder should have my reports, one folder should have my research data or output. So you can add new folders within your repository. You can edit the existing files, but you can also edit out some of the things that you wrote in your initial uh, draft. And this is what usually any document would look like. But these documents, most of the time, uh, go through a revision, hence you have different versions. So in this case, you can consider these dots as uh, different timestamps. At a given timestamp, you might have written in something. At some timestamp, you actually removed something. Another timestamp, you might have added extra bits into your document, and so on. Um, when we, for instance, Let's take example of a script. When we run a script, when we write the script and run it on a specific data set, we might realize that my script actually has some bug, which means I need to go back to the last version where, where my script worked. Similarly, could be possible for document, that you have a document, set of document have all the information. Someone came in and edited something out, um, but 
they realized that information that you had written was most updated one. So they should know how to go back from one version to another version without losing information. Earlier that I remember during my master's probably, I used to write version as different new file created with different names sent by emails to someone. And they will send me back an edited version with their initial added in the file name. And hence I would have like multiple versions of the file, but those versions don't really tell me which one is most updated. They just have different names. However, in the recent uh, work, we've also learned that version control um, is actually happening quite automatically given the tools and resources we are gonna use. So some example, let me go back to this one. Some examples include Google Documents or Google Sheets or any sort of Google, um, slides or data or whatever else you're using. Google is allowing automatic versioning, which means that you can click on the Google page and it can ask you to go back to previous version and revisions and you can actually retain some of the previous information that might have been lost in your current document. You also see uh, version control now on Dropbox. I don't use Dropbox, Dropbox anymore, so I can't really tell you how exactly that looks like. But there are also other ways uh, to use version control using Git. So Git is a local version control system. If you use terminal, then you might be aware of it. If you don't use terminal, then you should know that a lot of version control document actually use Git underneath. So what are the benefits of using version control? The version control actually allows you to collaborate in real time. So if you've ever had Google document, you would have shared it with all your colleagues and you all just sat together, even from different computers and you could write things. You can have an edit version, you can store the history, you can go back to previous version, which is quite beneficial because now everybody is able to comment or add or remove out anything without actually losing the original text. So what in ideal world GitHub does is similarly, but GitHub is a bit different from Google Doc, which is generally locally shared with people. Uh, in GitHub, you could actually also have private repository, but we are talking about public repository where you're sharing doc document openly with someone or people you don't know, and they would be able to help collaborate and improve the document with you. So now let's think about that's you, you have created a document um, and you at some point edited to remove some previous comments. Then there is another person who comes in and they edit some information and their edits are stored in a timestamp. And there is third person who added another new set of instruction um, and their information is also stored. What is another benefit of GitHub is that you're actually able to see who did what. One point of that is you can actually ask for clarification from the exact person who have done the edits, but you can also credit right people for the right edits that they have done. And also it's embedded in the history of internet, which means that nobody can take away the credit. Nobody can uh, take credit for work that you might have done or dismiss someone else's work in a project. So this is quite a collaborative way to, to work on a project online uh, which is why we will be teaching you about GitHub. However, just so you know, GitHub is not the only option. You have another resources like GitLab, Bitbucket, um, and more that I'm probably not aware of. And you're okay to use any of those. The purpose is not to promote GitHub. The purpose is to promote your project openly. Okay, so what is GitHub? GitHub is... Uh, now owned by Microsoft, in previously an independent organization that allows people to create repository online, but it is not free, which means that if you want to create a lot of private repository, you'll have to probably pay for it. So it hosts your repository. It helps work with other contributors or collaborators. It also provides a web interface with version control. So it's very similar to what we were talking about Google Doc, which is inside, connected to your email, but it is probably for internal use. Um, GitHub can be used a lot more for public facing documents. 
It is also useful for project management and communication. So in GitHub, you can create roadmaps. You learned about roadmap, you can create a page with roadmap, but it also has project board, which looks like Trello, uh, which you can use very conveniently, but that's not something we'll talk about today and we'll give you some resources if you wanna use that later. It is also useful for any number of project, any number of people working together on it. So I'm going to pause for now and uh, stop my screen sharing and ask folks to show me a thumbs up if they have actually created a GitHub account. Yes, Carolina, Patricia. Good, Nina, good, cool. Everybody has their account, which is perfect. Um, creation is enough. You don't have to know anything else about it for the moment. So that's great. We all have GitHub account. So what we're going to do is go with the next exercise. The next exercise is to create a repository. Um, so what does repository mean? And I'm going to actually not show you any more my slides and directly go in the repository where we will be creating new repository. So I will go back to my own account. Right now I'm on the Open Life Science account. I'll go back to my profile. So on the right top, you will see your own profile. In the right top, you also see this plus symbol. If my screen hopefully is visible. And you click on that plus symbol and it asks you to create a new repository. And we're gonna click on the new repository. And this should show me something like this. Anytime, please shout if I'm going too fast. I can pause and we can do this thing together. And at this, at this point, I'm actually expecting that you will follow along with me and do what I'm doing while looking at my screen. But also I'll give you five minutes after each work that we do together. So now what it shows me that I'm creating a new repository. I am the owner, so you can see my name and I'm going to give this repository a name. So I'm going to call it uh, for this exercise purpose. Um, First, GitHub collab, right? So you can call it anything, but for this purpose, I'm just calling it first GitHub collab. Um, I'm going to leave the description out for now, um, but if you want, you can add something like, I am testing how to work with GitHub using this repository. Cool. And now I'll actually leave this public. Don't click on private because uh, we need this project to be public at the moment. Um, and also I'll tell you later that because it's this project is public, we'll be able to use Git page or creating a mini website using this. I'm going to click here now, add a readme. So you all know what readme is. Readme is a simple file in your repository that tells you about this project. And that's it. This is all I'll do. I have a file, project name, a small description. It is public. I've added readme and I'll create a repository with that. And this is what it should show me. So this is now a repository called First GitHub Collab. It has a file called readme and my readme file has just the name of my repository and the tiny description that I provided. And that description is also added here. Okay, I'm gonna stop there for a second and see everyone has the chance to do it. I'm gonna pause the recording. Go ahead now. Okay, so we did that. We, what I'm going to now show you, lots of different things that would be useful for you to understand. Uh, we have a previous graduate from OLS called Emma Karun, and Emma Karun wrote a chapter about GitHub Novus. Uh, Emma used GitHub for the first time in OLS, and now she's leading a project that is absolutely based on GitHub. So please do go back to this link if you wanna know more in your own time, but I'll do that here already for you. So what you have right now is if I go to the GitHub, well, uh, this is your link, to your repository. There is a file called readme file. Um, and in order to edit that readme file, 
what you'll do is use this pencil symbol. So I'm going to go back here. That pencil symbol should also exist here. So that pencil symbol is literally telling you how to edit your file. Um, so right now what you see is this really boring looking text. But when you click on preview, that preview actually shows you some more much nicer looking document. And what is allowing us to see that difference is called Markdown. And Markdown is the reason why this file is called readme.md. So MD stands for Markdown. You can change this file name, but I would recommend not because in GitHub, uh, when you have a readme file with capital readme, it already recognizes your file as the landing page, which means it will be always the first page that anybody would be able to see when they visit your repository. So a little bit about Markdown. So first of all, yay, we all created our first repository. And so that's very, very exciting. And we saw that there is something about text that is happening. So here, what is different from your flat writing is this one hash symbol followed by a space. Um, and I'm going to change my repository name to not have this uh, hyphens. And that's allowed, right? Like this is your repository. You can edit, you can uh, identify what you want to change and what do you want people to know. So one single hash indicates the first title or the heading number one. You can have a second heading, which could be two hash followed by a space. And this could be any second heading that you want to add, but I'm just testing it with the word text, second heading. So this is what you should see. So you have a first title and this is a second heading. So for the third heading, of course, as you might have guessed, it would be three hash and so on. After four, it does not make sense to have heading anymore uh, because uh, it will the text will just get smaller and smaller. So this is very similar to what you might have in any document when you create that you have top level header, you have second level header, you have third level header. What other things we use in the file? So at the moment, I don't need them. So I'm going to remove those, but just keep an eye on when do you need the second header so you can add them. Okay, so this is a little bit of description about my repository that I'm testing how to work with GitHub using this repository. But I'll also say what I'm going to use here. This page is my landing document where my readers will see me create the following. You don't need to write all of these. It's just something that I'm writing for the demo purpose. The following elements. And now I want to give a list of things. So in order to create a list, you can use an asterisk followed by a space and you can add the item number one. You can add item number two, item number three and so on, right? And now look at the preview. The preview actually turned that uh, asterisk into this beautiful bullet point. This is unnumbered bullet point, uh, which means it doesn't say one, two, three. But what if I wanted to actually create one, two, three? So I'm testing numbered bullet points now. So for numbered bullet point, you need to do number dot. So what should be the second one? Probably 2.0, right? But what if I say one point again? So let's go back here. It actually doesn't really care about the number on the left side. It is quite smart in knowing that, okay, if you've started with one dot, you actually want rest of the, the list to be numbered and it actually corrects 
corrects you. And that's quite nice because what happens if I was like, oh, actually this one should go here. I don't need to worry about number anymore. I could just move around my, my numbers and the numbered list doesn't care about that at all, right? Okay, so this is quite interesting. What I'll do is show you the last thing, which is about adding image. Let's test adding image. Okay. Um, this is this is always a bit embarrassing, but I'm going to look for a cat image. But you can choose any other image that you that you fancy. I like that cat image. I'm going to click right, copy image link. So don't copy image, copy image link. And now what I would do is add an exclamation, a square bracket and a circle bracket. So this is your sort of code for how do you add image. This one is for your alt text. Describe what your image means. So this image shows a kitten, a white kitten with big eyes looking up. It's a quite small description, but hopefully you would be able to add better alt, alt text for your own research images, for instance. Now, if I click on preview, it actually did integrate that image in there. It's just such a cute cat. Cool. What I'll say is like, that's enough messing around for now. And we're going to commit that change. So what does commit mean is that we've done the editing and we're happy for this to be, be to this to become part of my repository. So I will give description for what I'm doing in the commit. So testing readme file. And I can add extended description. We tested adding header. Um, we also tested bullet points, numbered list, and image. Okay, and then with that, I'll, I'll, I'm happy to commit this change and that change now directly gets displayed in the readme page. Okay, so if I go now to my repository back, this is the page that it displays by default and it has all the changes that you would need. So of course this was a silly example and I would actually stop now um, about, sorry. So that was about how to create image. Um, I didn't record how to create link. So I'm going to just quickly show that to create link you use very similar to what you do for image except for you don't use exclamation mark. So in this case, we have a square bracket with information about the link and round bracket with the link itself. And when you preview, it should show you exactly what you did and you commit change. Okay, so, but then rarely in your repository, you would have one file, right? You would have a lot of different kinds of file. So how do you add new file? You would add new file by clicking on add file, create new file, and I'm going to call it test file, but in your case, you can always come back and change the name. So if I call it test.md, adding info soon, I can go down, commit change, adding new file and commit new file. Okay, so that is add, added now, but you would still have the readme file displayed because GitHub recognizes this, this name as a landing page. So what happens if you're like, oh, actually I didn't need to call it test two, I needed to call it something else. You can go back to edit you can come back here and you can change the name to project. I'm sorry, detail. Malvika, you are not sharing your screen. Oh, sorry. Thanks so much. Should have. <laughs> you show the code again, please, for the link, linking the issue. Yeah, I'll you do that. Comment. Thank you very much. Thank you for reminding me. Um, okay, we'll probably have to cut that out from the video. What we did is we added images, we added link, link is square bracket, followed by round bracket, very similar to image, except for we don't use exclamation mark. 
and you should be able to preview that right here um, and it should show you information about the link. And once you've added that, of course, you would add commit um, and you will make changes. So in our case, we had already committed before recording. So now I want you to show, to do, I want you to add new file, sorry kind of losing track of what I'm saying. So in order to create new file, you'll go on the add file button, click on that, create new file, and you'll give this a name. So let's say I call it project information dot empty. And I'll say adding project information, including following details and then you can again add information as you need and you can either create that as a header or you can leave that as a flat file so you can decide what you want to add you can uh, do exactly what you did for readme come down uh, adding second file and you commit new file okay so we have project information what happens if you decide that one of the file I added, actually, it should have better name because test2 doesn't mean anything. So I had created a file called test2. I'm going to, the, I'm going to go inside the file, click on the edit button. And it should show me this thing. So I can always come back and change it. So in your case, you remember that you need to create a contributor list to list all the people that have worked with you. So now I will actually then change the information and say um, all contributors are listed here. So that would mean that you add your name, your collaborator one name and so on, right? Um, so I will go ahead. So it will automatically give your commit some sort of name. In this case, if you don't add any detail, it says updating test to, to contributors list. Uh, in my case, I could just say um, creating contributors file. Okay. And then I'll commit change. And if I go back to my repository, it should show me that the name has been changed already. So yeah, you can always add multiple files. But what happens if you want to actually delete a file? Is that possible? Of course, that's possible. Uh, anything is possible, right, in these days. You have a very convenient delete this file. And you can click on the delete this file. It will basically show you the red. The red is in the GitHub is always about deleting something. And I would say, OK, I'm happy to delete this. Commit change and it actually deleted that file successfully. So we added new file, we deleted new file, but what happens if you wanna add a new folder, as in like a file inside a folder? So that's also possible. Using similar method, you have upload new, uh, sorry, create new file. You can add folder one followed by, so sorry, I went too fast, folder one, forward slash when you do forward slash it actually creates a new folder okay so it's gonna be better named than folder one so i will call it docs docs are probably or you could call it report which is even more important for your project forward slash and now i'm going to create readme.md inside this file and describe report folder this folder contains all my project reports. Okay, so created a folder name, forward slash, added a file. This file could be called anything, but I've still chosen to call it readme. So creating new folder. Commit change. So if I go back here, you have two files that we had created, and you have a report folder indicated by this. So if you click on reports, it has a readme page. And because GitHub actually recognizes that readme page is what I need to display, it by default displays that. And then you can again go ahead, add a new file, delete a new file, or whatever that is needed. Okay. I 
want you to then take a minute to make sure that or ask me question if that was too fast ask me concern you may have which would be like what would happen if i want to upload a folder or upload an image right like you can also rather than creating a file you can upload an image so you can try to test that again sorry claudia did i miss something uh, no sorry that was an earlier, earlier oh, okay. comment but when i was uh, not sharing my screen yes indeed <laughs> okay. but uh but actually i was wondering i i what i missed is where the where is the um, the delete file mm. command yeah so delete is actually a new feature on the repository so every file so if i go to my readme file every file shows you the pencil button but it also shows you uh container recycling button but the problem is that once you delete the file it's gone you cannot find it back okay it doesn't go into a bin there is no bin okay. but that's also a very good question but in every file on the top you also see this this timer this timer indicates history and we had been talking about version control right so let's go back to my full repository my repository has this button that says eight commits, which means that I have done eight changes in my file. And if I click on this, the timer, which shows go back, it actually now shows me what I did in the past. So all the things that I was telling you about that your history is recorded. In the first commit, I had initial commit. Then I added a readme file added a link to OLS file, added a new file, added a second file. I created a contributors file and deleted a file, right? And created a new folder. So your history is all recorded, but I was just asking, uh, talking to Claudia where we're like, oh, when you delete, it's gone. Let's see what happens. So if it says, okay, there was a file called project information that no longer exists. Um, you can load the difference and see what is there, what is not there. So you can always still find information of what existed, right? So even though you can't do a lot of things on GitHub, it still keeps information intact. And it will also show you what was done by whom. Okay. Um, and then we talked about that you can also create uh, sorry, upload image. So for example, if I go on the report and I'm like, okay, in my report, I'm going to add some images. I can create new file, call it images folder, um, adding images here. So I'm just at this point creating folder for image. Sorry, creating image folder. And I need to call this so info.md. And I commit. So what I did is created a folder. Inside that folder, I created a file. I gave just one line to the file and I'm committing change. So now inside my report folder, I have a new folder called images. And now I can click here, upload file. And in order to do that, you can choose file from your own computer. I'm gonna take a risk and try to upload a file here. So I have, a, I have an image called Enigma2 and I created as a choose your file and adding Enigma image and commit change. It's processing my file. So now if I click on reports inside image, I have a file called Enigma and that's uh, an image of Enigma, right? So you can always upload image file. Uh, you can also upload other kinds of documents like your PDF, you can uh, upload presentation you've given, you can upload posters you've created. So you can always have everything centralized in one place. Okay. How good are we doing? Is everyone still with me too much? Should we take like a 10 minutes break and come back? 
laying on my okay so one last thing that i'll show you well there are many things that i'll show you but this is quite exciting on this particular repository is what happens if you want to change your file project repository name so one caveat is that you can do that and it's okay to do that when you're the only person working on the repository because you know you're changing it but if you've already shared the repository with someone else and then change the name make sure that everybody is aware because if you do that without their knowledge they'll be quite confused there is a setting button at the end of the huge panel that you see on the top and in that you can always change the name so for example if you have been working on your current test repository but have added about your project it's actually advisable that you call your repository your project name right so for example if this was my ols 7 project and if my project was called uh, teaching github if that was my project repository name i can always rename that and this red tick uh, sorry this green tick says that this name is available for me to use i'll click the rename and it is done so you can always do that but advisable not to do if you have already shared this, this link with people okay now in the setting repo setting of repository you have a lot of information right you have uh um, things sorry can you share oh i'm not sharing again. my screen again oh thank god you. thank you please thanks for reminding <laughs> okay go back again whoever is editing this thank you Please remove anything I said before. So you have setting, and in that setting, you have repository name. You can set always change that repository name, but again, don't do it if you have already shared this repository. I'm going to change this name to teaching repository, and it shows that it is available for me to use. I'll click rename and my name should appear here. So earlier this repository was called first GitHub Collab. In your case, it might be called project one or whatever you've used. But if you're using this repository for your project purpose, it's good to give it a name that it actually reflects. Um, however, again, do that with the knowledge of all the people who are working in this repository. In the setting itself, we have a lot more information, right? That it, it would have, information like feature that you're using this the scariest button which is at the end and it's called danger zone which is about delete this repository um, in some cases you might want to delete that repository and you can delete the repository uh, but when you try to delete that repository it wants you to be sure um, so always use that with caution now what we want to do is click on another thing called page here so in the setting itself you have lots of information like collaborator moderator and everything but this is what we're interested in we're going to click on page and that page get a page is going to allow you to create the website using the information that you have provided in your repository in that repository, it asks you for source. It's asking you, what do you want to deploy as website? You will click on that. Sorry, you will click on the branch and that branch is main. So you've only worked on one branch, which is main. Uh, and I'll show you where that is. So you will be using that main and save that. This would say GitHub, GitHub pages are saved. Um, and then I'm going to go here. I'll show you what, what we meant by main. So when you work on your repository, what you've been doing is that you, you're directly committing changes on your repository, which means that you have only one, one single branch where you've been working on, which is called main. If you had multiple branch that you could create, you would be working on multiple branches, which means that you can choose if there are changes that people are working on that is not available on the main repository. So let me go back and explain you what branching means. 
So what you have done is commit changes on your main files. You have a file, you create change, and that there's no worries. But you can always create branches, meaning that at some point you can decide that, oh, I want to test something, but I don't want anybody to know, which means that I will not make the change directly on repository. I'll make the change somewhere else, which will be called branching. So in this case, what that would look like is that let's say I have a contributors list file and I want to add information such as my name. I'm going to add Nina's name, but Nina is not in the room and I'm going to add Claudia's name. I'm going to add Patricia's name, right? But Nina is not in the room, right? And I don't have permission to add her name. So instead of making the change on the main branch, I'll create a new branch. When I click on the new branch, it asks me to give it a name. So I will call it contributors branch. And then as usual, I'll add adding info. You can add the details. And you, instead of saying commit now, it is asking you to propose change. And by that change of language, you already know that you're not making the change in the, in the main repository. When you say propose change, it brings you here. So what is happening is that now you're creating a, another version that is not going in the repository um, and you want someone else's approval on that. So here you can provide more information which would mean here adding info for all contributors. So I, I'll add all the information. So Claudia, Patricia, and Nina. So I'm going to create pull request. The pull request is now means that I have edited a change. In this case, it says that there is one file that has changed. If I click on that, it says that there's a file called contributors list. You have removed this information. You have added this information. But what if I go back to my main repository and look at contributors list? Those change do not come directly on the repository. So the pull request allows you to create a branch. So in this case, you have a main branch. Sorry, you have a main branch, which is in pink. But then you have another branch where you're doing changes. In some cases, you would create a fork, which I will not touch on today, but you can always use go on someone else's repository and you can fork it to create your own version of repository. And you don't have any commitment to actually merge the change back. So what happens if, let's say, I'm going to do that for Nina, right? If Nina, I go in and, hey, Nina, can I add your name? So I say, Claudia, can I add your name? And you say, yeah, it's fine. Patricia, it's fine. Nina was like, okay, it's okay, no worries. So what would Nina do is basically approve me for doing that change. And then once I have it, I can say, I have confirmed that all names can be added. And when I'm ready, I can merge the pull request. So why this is useful to create pull requests is when you're working with different people, you might want to discuss some changes. Um, and once you put it in the main repository, you don't really allow people to give their feedback on the changes before you actually do it. So it's quite useful to create more branches. So where did we get from here is that when we were in the setting and we were in the page, it asked us what branch do you want to deploy? So obviously we want to deploy the main branch. But if you click here now, it actually shows me multiple branch because in my case, we had just created another branch called contributors branch. But in my case, I want to create main. And if you go in here, it also shows, shows you on the top that your site is live. If I click on visit site, this is what my site looks like. So this is my website with the readme page updated in here. So your readme page is what this was going to deploy. Okay, I'm going to stop there and please remind me next time when I don't share my screen. Operative project, where do you build it? Yeah, so let's do that. How do we add collaborators? 
you have settings and in the setting you have collaborators in the collaborators when you click on collaborators it asks you to add people so um i actually would like to go to my chat and find out so claudia make it identify as a person and then it adds as the adder to the repository so now an invitation has been sent to my collaborator so you can always add as many people as possible in your collaboration list um, and it's quite advisable that you invite all the people you're working with that they have full access to the repository there's another thing that uh, you can uh, you can do which would at some point it will say that your branch is not protected right so in your repository on the top it says your branch is not protected the moment i added someone and then i'll go and protect this branch the protect that branch which comes from this branch option it says require a pull request before merging so we had briefly seen how to create pull request when you want to create a branch which is in this case here. So if you create a new branch, you create a pull request. So I'm going to say, yes, require a pull request. And then it says, okay, do you want to require approval? So when you create a pull request, and if you're working with multiple people, at least one person should review it. So this is part of open review process. And I said, yes, I will want at least one person to review it. And then with that, I'll create so now my branch is protected, which means that if anybody needs to add any change to my repository, they will have to first create a pull request. Someone needs to review and approve it. And um, that's how you would have better collaboration. So nobody is just adding things randomly. There's a bit of rule setting around how to work on it. So Patricia was just saying that she was adding a contributor's guideline on the repository. So of course, that's absolutely recommended. You have a readme page, you can add contribution guideline, you can create um, code of conduct. What I am going to do is actually give you a link to a project template. So this is a template that I created uh, for my organization um, and anybody should be able to use it. So this project is available under license, which is, MIT for software and Creative Commons for documentation. This repository already comes with different things that you might want to have in your project. You can click on this and you can create a new repository. So you can always use this template for yourself, which would mean that this comes with a pre-populated contribution guideline, code of conduct, license, readme, and all the information. Um, so here it also says what kind of structure it is. So of course, this is too much, which means that you say, oh, well, you know, I don't need this file. You can always delete some of the files that you don't need. So yeah, I'll just give this to you to come back in your own time. And I'll also add that in the etherpad. So, you know, if you want to start a new repository, you don't need to start from scratch. You have a template to begin with. And whatever file you don't need, you of course can delete those. Okay, so we covered adding contributors, we covered how to add Git pages. Last thing that I wanna do with Nina, Nina and I will be helping approve it, right? So what we have been doing is working on my own repository, which is one part of doing open research. But sometimes as um, I think one of the previous attendee had, one of their members had already, cre already created a repository somewhere else. So, which means that there is a repository that exists somewhere that you want to work on. So what does that look like? So, so far we've worked on only our own repository. So for that purpose, we have created an OLS 7 repository, which I will send you in the chat. Okay, so this is exactly the same repository where each of you have also created your issue so this is where you have created your issues right but this repository has 
also similar to the template that I said, we have a code of conduct, we have a license, we have a readme page, we have all the information that we want. We haven't added a contributor's guideline, which I should add to make this project actually complete. But there is a folder called week five. And that week five has a file called notes. And I will just send you directly that document. This page has very basic information, but exactly the information that you have in the etherpad here, except for your names are not added in there. So we have a roll call. We have one name from Nina and Nina added an icebreaker here. So what I want you to do is edit this file based on where your names are. Keep, keep track of what name you are. And in my case, my name is number four. So in principle, what I'll do is click on this. My name is number four. So I'll add my name, Alvika. Um, I have a blooming violet hydrangea on my table. It smells amazing. It's for real. Like I'll show you if you can see me. <laughs> so I am adding that information next to my name. And I will go down, create a new branch. I'll leave that as a patch one, adding my information, right? And I propose change. Adding my information on README. Uh, and I'm asking Nina. Can you please approve this? Okay, so Nina is my uh, collaborator on this project. I'm creating a pull request and I will now stop sharing and ask Nina to share her screen and show me how she approves the pull request. Sorry, can you see my screen now? Yes, we see it. Yeah, perfect. So yeah, I might need a bit of your help, Malvika. I would expect it would be... In the pull request. So if you click on yes. the pull request. Oh yeah, I can see it now. So, and then you see that I created a pull request and now Nina, you might want to just you know, add Yeah, you can just say okay. okay and you can merge that directly okay okay so Sorry. that's quite simple right like in this case i have it, it could be like a lot more information however uh what i will do now if i can stop your screen sorry nina so i will if you remember, we protected our branch in the previous one. So I'm going to protect my branch here as well. So I click add protection rule, require a pull request. At this point, it was not required to have a pull request. Okay. Allow forced pushes. To know what I'm not doing right. Okay. I create it. And now if I go back again to my file, to the notes, I'll add again. Um, and I actually would say, and it smells amazing whatever that is, right? Like I've added a new information, creating a new branch, a patch to. So now when I click on that, it will automatically create, um, and they say, Nina, can you please check if my info is correct? And then Nina, I'll ask you again to share your screen. To show how it looks differently a little bit. Oh, it's uh, not really asking you to review it. 
So you can also, for instance, use this place. No, it's not asking you to review it. Let me see what I'm doing wrong. Branch. Number of approval. Hmm. Okay, I'll see what, what I'm doing wrong. But in general, what I want you to do is actually please create a pull request on this repository by adding your information. And Nina and I would try to approve that for you. That was your pull. So that was your pull request. You've already done issue creation on OLS 7 GitHub repository. So I won't go through that. The only difference between issue and pull request is that issue is like a to-do list. You can create to-do list as a documentation purpose. Um, which you saw that we did. So let me quickly share and then I'll let you all go that in this case, you have issue list. We have already folks who have created issue list in that issue list, they actually describe what they are doing. You can create, um, sorry, I'm sure that they met or they didn't, right? So you can always use that. You have pull requests when you want to make change in someone else's repository you create a pull request and someone else should be able to approve that. A few things that I would like you to do, try on your own time. What you did now is a basic website creation, right? So we went into setting, we went into page, we said, okay, use my, uh, deploy from my branch. And in this case, it's not there because we haven't deployed the OLS 7. But there are many beautiful pages that you can create, which we haven't looked at, but you might wanna look at how to create a lot more beautiful page than just basic page. Um, and I've added that link in here. So in your own time, please do have a look at that. I also gave you a template repository. So in the future, you don't need to start from scratch. You can start from an existing template and you can adapt the file for your own project. There's a lot that we haven't talked about that is available in this particular slide deck. But I think you've done a lot for a day. This is a lot of things. And I apologize that I overburdened you today. But I hope you still enjoyed it and that you're very happy that you have a project repository and a basic functioning page. Well done, everyone. And thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Nina, for helping me and approving everyone's pull request. <laughs>